presenter is a full-time content creator based here in Winnipeg. On her channel, R Barn at R Barn's Yard, she shares everything from home decor, DIY projects, plant care tips, and much more. She loves creating bright, airy spaces that make it feel like you're forever on vacation. A wife and mother who loves the outdoors, traveling, and being active, please give a warm round of applause to our Barnes Yard Inc.'s presentation, Don't Wait, Do It Yourself, with Heather Barnes. Get up, Heather Barnes. chugging from the water bottle, empathize with me. It's dry up here, <laughs> and I get pretty uh, uh, dry when I'm chatting. All right, so I did this presentation yesterday. Um, it's called Don't Wait, Do It Yourself. I truly believe that you can start a DIY project today, tomorrow, and create an improvement in your home, and build a lot of confidence with DIY skills. So I'm gonna talk, talk to you a little bit about my journey, who I am, some of the projects that I've done, what I'm currently working on, and then I'm gonna leave you with uh, four DIY skills that you can take home with you and do in your own space today, tomorrow, whenever you're feeling uh, a little bit cooped up in this uh, Winnipeg winter. So don't wait, do it yourself. I'm Heather from our Barnes Yard. That is my online channel. I was previously um, a elementary school teacher for eight years. And on my maternity leave, I found myself feeling cooped up at home. I had this additional time when there were gap times, things like that. And honestly, I felt understimulated. I, I was bored at home. I was used to working a fast-paced job. And I thought to myself, you know what? Here in this home, a home that we bought as a fixer-upper, uh, I want to kind of improve this, this home. But I'm on a budget, like a, a lot of Manitobans are. I know this is like a Manitoba phenomenon, they don't do this in Toronto or something, but if someone says nice outfit, you say, well, I got it on sale. You're really excited about saving money here in Manitoba, and that's something I'm passionate about too. Um, I'm a maiden freezing, so I have a midnight blood uh, running through my veins. So I'm gonna show you some things that aren't gonna cost you a lot of money, um, but are gonna make a big impact in your home. So this is um, my channel, uh, and something I, kind of talked about already is I was tired of waiting, um, so I started to decide to just start. So I, my husband is a pilot, he works um, away a lot, and there was one weekend where I was home uh, with my daughter, he was away for the weekend, and I had this entryway closet uh, that I knew had some potential, and I'm a big HGTV girl, uh, so I was a bit excited to see HGTV on this stage. If you're here, hi. <laughs> um, but I have this entryway closet. This is the listing photo. It didn't come with doors. This home was filthy. They had a bunch of dogs. Uh, but I saw the potential in this home. And this is my first project that I did in this home by myself. So I didn't, I didn't even tell my husband because I don't need permission in my own home to do projects. Um, and I got started. I, I built this bench here that you can see. Uh, just out of some two by fours that we saw, I got onto Pinterest, checked out some ideas there. Um, I'm a big believer in just start and learn as you go, and that was what I did here. So I uh, used some trim that we had to create some visual interest, gave it a coat of paint, and I just want to disclaimer this for you. This is not a Manitoba winter uh, picture of what our entryway looks like. This is a beautiful style image. Uh, but it really adds a lot more function to our home than this closet that we were given when we moved in. So we can hang our coats up easily, we have storage up top for hats, mitts, stuff like that, and then an area at the bottom that we don't have those baskets anymore, we just put our boots there. Um, but it increased the function of our home. I use materials we already had or materials that you could buy very affordably, two by fours and MDF trim, uh, some paint, and then all those baskets are just from Canadian Tire. So that was our first project. Um, and I'm gonna walk you through a few more before and afters so you can see potential. I think that's one thing that a lot of people maybe struggle with is you're in a home and you, and you just can't see the vision. Things I would look for maybe if you're home shopping, uh, I would never buy a home that isn't north and south facing. That's something that's really important to me. You're going to get a lot more sunshine, and natural light isn't something that you can renovate for. You can't necessarily add something like that. 
Um, our home, what is, it's not large, it's a 1,300 square foot home, um, but I could see the potential in, we had a kind of a peak ceiling, I saw a lot of potential there. Big windows, that north face, north and south facing um, exposure. But I'll show you, there's, the, when you look at the pictures, like an orange Mario Kart playroom isn't like screaming Pinterest perfect to me. Um, but we added some paint. This is our pandemic project. Uh, we finished our entire basement before the cost of lumber went up. Um, painted the walls. Uh, this is one of the potential that I could see when we bought our home, even with this orange uh, room. It had heated floors, which we love. It was an unfinished basement, with, like, which I also love, because then I don't have to rip down something I don't like. I get a totally blank space uh, to start with myself. And it had really big windows. Even though it was a basement, it had really big windows. So it does have a nice, uh, bright space. And I honestly like our basement sometimes more than our uh, than our main floor. So this is another uh, look at our home. So this was the listing photo, yellow walls. Uh, we added a fireplace here. Uh, I've done three or four fireplaces now uh, by myself. I think that's something that I've uh, intermediate person could definitely do in their home and I have all of my tutorials of how I've done those on my channel if you would like to add a fireplace this winter I think you could probably do it in a couple weekends um, again we just uh, painted the main floor and then I actually chatted with some people down here uh, they remove um, popcorn ceiling I have popcorn ceiling in my whole home and I, I just don't want to deal with it they have really great prices there and I told them to email me so I'm thinking that might be a 2024 project for me. Uh, this is another one that we had. So this is a, just was a rec room kind of thing. Gross carpet, drop ceiling. Um, we dropped all the ceiling, added this slap feature wall. That You can buy some really nice panels down here, but the, my I'm on a budget. I like to do it the cheap way. Uh, so those are just one by two slats from uh, Home Depot. Uh, cut to size and then stained uh, to match and then just attached uh, to some supports running horizontally. Again, that's on my channel if you want to see that project. A really easy way to just elevate uh, a simple space. This is our primary bedroom. Uh, they had opted to do a little DIY project there with some Walmart wallpaper, but I took that down, added some MDF trim to create a board and batten. Uh, and then, yeah, again, just paint and decor. Really paint, and that's what I'm going to be talking about first, paint is one of your best uh, tools to use to create a budget-friendly upgrade. It's really going to change the feel of your space uh, without spending a ton of money. Uh, this is, I'm going to talk about this uh, bathroom a lot more, but this is a prime example of the power paint. So, um, as you can see, this is like a classic 90s, in the early 2000s uh, kind of bathroom, brown walls, it's not really my vibe, an oak uh, vanity. Most of the things in here have been transformed with paint, and I'm going to show you kind of what we did there. Uh, the floor is a peel and stick tile that I'm going to show you as well today. And this is just an overview of some different projects that we've done. So this right here is a nursery that I did for a friend. That is just um, value packs of trim. You can get them at Home Depot. They're about $50 to $70 um, for a pack of 10. Uh, all you have to do is, is cut the vertical battens and give it a coat of paint with some caulking there. I'm going to teach you how to apply caulking. Uh, and you create a really beautiful feature wall um, there. This at the bottom is another nursery I did for a friend. That is strictly paint. So I have four different colors of paint. I just painted those designs by hand. You could totally use a pencil to plan it out. I did that in a day. That's a really easy way to add some interest uh, to a room on a budget. Uh, this here in the middle is an Ikea a bookshelf. It's called the Best Guy, I think. Uh, I have it on my page if you're not sure, a blog post. Um, I used the shelf that was already in there from our closet and added new rods and created a really nice custom built-in on an Ikea budget. Um, and then this is a bigger project that we did. We had this open space framed in in our basement for a bathroom and just two winters ago, I think it was, I did that whole project about 90% by myself. My dad's a contractor. Uh, he's always encouraged us to just give it a try. I was raised in the 90s where I could just go down to my dad's workshop and grab a hammer nails and a, like a handsaw and nobody questioned me. <laughs> Nowadays it's like, whoa, easy. 
Um, but that kind of nurtured a lot of confidence in me. So he helped me uh, lay the floor tile. He helped me put in the shower uh, base. But I tiled that entire shower by myself. Uh, and I've built both of these fireplaces here by myself. But it didn't start like that. I didn't just wake up one day and, and decide to do a bathroom. I started really small and I built confidence from there. And I truly believe that you can also do that. Start small with some skills, build confidence. And over time, I've been doing this for about 10 years. Over time, you're gonna have a lot more skills than you did 10 years ago. And you're also gonna have a home that you can feel really proud of. And this is our current project. I'm just gonna get a little hydration. So this is actually um, our second van renovation. About two years ago, we <coughs> wanted to get into another project. Our first home was feeling uh, like it was getting close to being done. Done, there's all something to do. Um, but, and we were kind of dabbling in real estate, but it just, I had just taken the leap from teacher to entrepreneur. I didn't have any credit, anything to, to be go to a mortgage. And so we decided to buy a Dodge Sprinter van. Um, it was hideous and it was just meant for transporting a family. Um, but we were able to flip that van and use our renovation skills for homes inside a vehicle. And we were actually able to flip that van for about a $30,000 profit and use that profit to build by the second uh, van that we're working on now. So this is our um, van, it's named Nicholas Sage. <laughs> the first one was Keanu Leaves. And, <laughs> and this is the interior of Keanu Leaves, but that is now sold to someone. Uh, but our next van, we are about 60% completed and I'll be working on that actually starting tomorrow. So if you'd like to follow along on that project, we're planning a month long road trip uh, in for a month uh, in April. So follow along with that, it's gonna be a great project. All right, so again, I'm a teacher, so you're gonna, you're gonna maybe feel like my students. I want you to leave here feeling like you learned something, feel like you're a little bit inspired and encouraged. Uh, but I want you to think about this idea. Start and then learn. A lot of people think, well, I don't have the skills, I don't have the tools, I don't have all this stuff. Just start, that's one of the biggest steps, and learn as you go. I didn't know half of the things that I've done. I didn't know how to renovate a van, and I still don't. When I, I start a project and I learn as I go, I problem solve, I figure it out. I've said to my husband a million times, this van feels like an escape room. Like you have to figure out little problems, and, and they all have to be done in order, and like, I love that kind of stuff. So, if you wait until you're ready, you'll be waiting the rest of your life. That's a little, uh, little quote. Um, so I want you to, to encourage you, that, that sticking point in your home that really bugs you, start and learn as you're going. You're gonna really surprise yourself with what you can do. All right, so we're gonna learn. These are four things that I'm gonna teach you today. Um, I left the classroom, but I'm still teaching every day online and now in person at the home show. Um, I'm gonna teach you some painting tips. I'm gonna teach you um, how to apply caulking, both uh, one that you would do on your baseboard as well as maybe around a shower um, or a bathtub. I'm gonna show you how to hang art. Is there anyone here in the house who has a piece of art that's just sitting on the ground below where you would like to have it hung? That's a classic. <laughs> Today you're gonna to learn how to, how to get it actually on the wall. It's not as hard as you think. Um, and I'm also gonna teach you how to patch that hole. If you make a mistake, you can fix it. It's, it's no big deal, all right? So this bathroom I, I talked about a little bit already. This uh, is our ensuite bathroom. Uh, it is not my dream bathroom, but I am a firm believer that you can make anything better uh, with a little bit of paint. It's kind of like that lipstick on a pig phenomenon. Uh, if you hate something, it's likely that if you added some paint, it's probably not gonna get worse. It might get better. So it's a great way to kind of play around uh, with uh, paint and create a bit of a, an upgrade on a budget. So in this room, uh, we painted the walls, obviously. Uh, I added a little storage cabinet there from Ikea to increase the function. Uh, the tub, that faucet is actually spray painted. That's not gonna last me forever, but it's gonna buy me a little bit of time so I don't have to replace it right away. All I did there was uh, take it off, spray primer, uh, let it dry fully. It's important that you allow dry time when you're using paint. Uh, and then I just use gold spray paint. That, we bought this home uh, about seven years ago and it still looks like that. We don't use that tub daily, it's a jacuzzi tub. I wouldn't do this in a mean shower, uh, but it definitely upgrades the space. 
for the costume canister feet. Um, we upgraded the vanity just by um, painting it. I'm going to talk to you kind of with the process of that. We added new hardware, and then that's just a different sink top from Lowe's. Um, and then we added new faucet, new mirror, um, new light fixture. So that was a pretty good budget friendly upgrade. Oh, and the floor is uh, redone with peel and stick tile. I have used this exact project in my entryway, and it is still holding strong about five years later in Winnipeg, winter, gross, uh, snowy weather. Uh, the tiles around the tub are also painted. Again, you wouldn't do that in a shower you use every day. You're not going to get as much durability. But here, where it's pretty much just aesthetic and it's a tub that maybe my plants get watered in more than I actually sit in it, um, but it really increases uh, the visual um, beauty of the space. Also, I should say, if you have any questions along the way, I do not mind being uh, interrupted. I taught grade two for seven years and kids always just interrupt me. So if you have a question and you want to stop me, I have no problem answering it as we go. All right, so let's talk about products and supplies when it comes to painting. I brought my tickle trunks here. Yesterday I lost the pointer in my toolbox. It was a whole thing. I'm gonna to try to keep it safe. Um, so here's my first question. Where are my cutters and where are my rollers? Who is Who are my cutters? Who likes cutting in? <laughs> cutters are rare. I am also a cutter. I like cutting. Uh, who are my rollers? Okay, a couple more rollers. And then I kind of both. We got a both guy in the back. That's good. Um, so if you don't really like cutting, you might not have met the best paintbrush ever yet. This is my favorite paintbrush. It's a Wooster Shortcut, it's called. Um, and what I really love about this, uh, specifically for me, I don't have like huge hands. It's small, it fits in my hand. I have really good control with it. But the best part is it's flexible. So you're not gonna get that uh, fatigue from, from other paintbrushes that have a wooden handle. Um, it's really comfortable in your hand. It flexes um, there. I like that there's not a long handle and I'm really close to the bristles so I can have better control. Um, and the bristles are really nice and soft, which I think is great. Um, so I would definitely recommend a good paintbrush. It will increase the quality. Again, I'm a cheap Mennonite, so I love pinching a dollar where I can. But this is one area that I would splurge. I mean, splurge is ten ten dollars, so that's not really going to break the bank. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, how much? Seven dollars? Something like that. They they do go on sale for seven dollars, and they sell out like crazy when they are because uh, they're the best. Um, but I would definitely recommend a good paintbrush. And if you have a good paintbrush, it's going to last you a lot longer if you take care of it. So you might see um, crazy people on the internet uh, telling you to wrap it up and throw it in your fridge or throw it in your freezer. I don't recommend doing that because you know what usually happens? Uh, it's a graveyard of paintbrushes uh, in your fridge and they just get forgotten about uh, and then you end up throwing them all away. So you're really not saving a paintbrush. I mean, I don't mind if you save it for one day and then you clean it that's fine, um, but I wouldn't recommend just wrapping it and leaving it for a couple months. Not a great move. Um, what I do recommend though is cleaning it really well. So I run it under water, I use Dawn dish soap, it's my favorite dish soap. <laughs> um, and then I use one of these little paintbrush cones and that just helps really separate the bristles and gets all that extra paint out. And once you've gotten as much as you can, get a cup of water, put a drop of Dawn dish soap in, put this into the cup, but make sure your water doesn't touch the metal. You can see I did that by accident with a bit of rusting. Um, just put it on a, your window ledge, by your sink, whatever. In the morning when you wake up, Santa will come, no. <laughs> um, both take it out and all the, the bottom of the cup will have a lot of paint that you didn't get out. And you'll get it really nice uh, and clean. I also know people who uh, kind of wash it with uh, fabric softener. I think that's like uh, a nice trick to keeping your bristles really soft. So that's going to um, help you a lot. All right, I'm going to talk next about flashing. So um, what that is, is kind of a, I don't know, a phenomenon that say you've painted, a, you've, you've made a hole in the wall, you've patched the wall, and you try to paint that section, and the next day you can see where that mistake is. You've seen that before. That's what's called flashing. Um, one way that I have learned to kind of uh, avoid that flashing is to prime that spot uh, first before painting. So this is a primer that I really love. It's called Zinsser Bullseye 1-3. You can buy it anywhere. Uh, it's really good. It's 
you are refinishing furniture, painting vanity, that kind of stuff, which I'll chat about later. But it also is great, say you've patched the wall, like I have here, you've sanded it, it's nice and smooth. Give it a coat of primer first, let it dry and then paint, and you're gonna see a lot less of that color variation um, and a difference in sheen. Uh, and maybe that can make you feel a bit braver in making a hole in your wall. Because I know a lot of people, it's kind of like a spiral effect. Well, if I, if I try to take the picture, I'll make a mistake, and then I have to patch it, and then I'll have to paint it, but then I'll have to paint the whole wall, I'll have to paint the whole house, I have to burn it down, like I, I can't, I cannot do it. It's not that, that, that bad, and I think this primer is gonna help you a lot with the, that flashing. All right, I wanna show you a little trick um, that I like for uh, prepping my roller. Okay, roller, roller friends in the house. All right, so say you have your paint roller. This isn't actually how you use them. There's a tool that, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so if you wanna get your, uh, your roller ready, what I recommend doing, because um, sometimes when you're rolling away and you're noticing like all these little fuzzies, it's so annoying, right? You have to pick them all out or whatever. Uh, that's because your roller's brand new and those fuzzies might be a little bit extra on there. So what I do is I just take a roll of painter's tape and I just give this thing like a little, like a little cast. You get the idea. And then once I've done that, I just rip it off. And all those extra fuzzies are gonna be um, on my painter's tape. So it's a really great way to avoid all those fuzzies um, before you get started. I also wanna give you, you permission, um, because I needed permission, and I feel so much better now that I've done it. Um, I give you permission to buy those paint tray rollers, or like those liners. Um, I, for the longest time, I, I hated painting. I still don't love painting, um, but I didn't like it because of all the cleanup. Those liners, they cost like a dollar fifty, two dollars. But my my cheapness didn't want to buy that. I like I know I gotta save money. If if buying those liners makes it easy easier for you um, to kind of get the job going, I give you permission to buy those liners. I give you permission. To, to not wash your roller when you're done and maybe just throw it away, do a different one. If that helps you get your project rolling, you have permission to spend that little bit, bit more because you saved a ton of money not hiring someone to do it. So it's kind of keeping your margins good. That's girl math right there. <laughs> All right. I just want to chat quickly about painting furniture or cabinetry because that's a really big budget upgrade that I recommend. Because a lot of times you move into a home, the vanity isn't exactly what you wanted, the kitchen isn't exactly what you wanted, but you don't have a lot of money up front um, to get it started. And I'm a big believer in not taking out a loan for a project that you don't necessarily need to do right away. Obviously, if your hot water tank goes, uh, something structural goes and you need a loan, totally fine. But I would rather people do some budget-friendly upgrades um, to kind of buy themselves some time, a little band-aid fix, and save the money for a couple more years and just pay for it. I think that's a better use um, of your money, and I think it kind of is a safer way to I don't know, get some improvements in your home. Um, but doing uh, a little budget-friendly upgrade, she's gonna steal my show, and that's, <laughs> um, is a great way to uh, just give your, give your home a facelift. So if you have a vanity or kitchen, here's what you wanna do. Take all the doors off, really easy to do, just screwdriver if you want power tools or an impact driver or a drill take off all the doors label them so you know where they're going what you're going to do first is you're going to sand your cabinet doors to kind of just rough them up you don't need to get down to the grain you're just trying to take off that gloss so that your paint has something to grip onto it's kind of like when you if you um ever get to lock done they kind of buzz it to give it a bit of a grip on your nails um, then what you're going to do is you're going to clean that off, so it's nice and clean. If you use water, let it dry fully. Then you're going to go in with this primer, the Sensor Bin, um, Sensor Bullseye. Paint the primer on. It's not going to give you a full coverage. It's just going to give you a grip. That's what primer is meant to do, give you a grip <coughs> surface. Let it dry fully. That's one of my keys in making sure this stuff lasts, is make sure you're doing the, the full dry time. If you've never gotten your nails done before um, and you put your shoes into your, in your feet into the socks too quickly, you ruin the pedicure. It's the same with, with uh, painting a vanity or something like that. You want to let it dry fully so that you really get a nice hard finish um, on your cabinetry. 
Then you're gonna go in after you've primed with paint. And I saw Sherwin Williams was here. The paint that I would recommend for that is Sherwin Williams Emerald. They have three cans of it at their booth I saw. Um, it's one of the best paints for durability in um, cabinet refinishing, vanities, that kind of stuff. Um, and like a can of paint for a vanity, that's gonna cost you, what, $50? It's a lot cheaper than going out and buying a brand new vanity for $2,000. So that's kind of my process that I would do for that. And then you can all also upgrade your hardware either by spray painting it, if you don't mind the shape, um, or Amazon has every make and model of handle for a really affordable price. Okay, and we already talked about cleaning your brush, so we are gonna move on from that to our next slide. All right, just a quick little brain dump of other things that I thought I wanna to talk to you about uh, painting. I know some people really stress about choosing a paint color. I'm not that girl. I have a few processes that I go through and then I just go for it. It's not gonna make or break your home if you just didn't choose the exact right paint on the swatch. Decor um, and artwork and that kind of stuff is really gonna change um, the, the feel of the space. So don't stress too much, but this is the process that I go through when I'm choosing a paint color. So number one, I start at Pinterest. I type in um, words that I want, say, um, bright air or the best white paint colors 2023. And then maybe I'll get some ideas from there and I'll put a few on my list. Um, you can also, you don't have to necessarily go to one paint, say Benjamin Moore, then I maybe I, the only thing close to me is uh, Sherwin Williams. Then I say, don't say this word, okay? Then I type in Benjamin Moore, Sherwin Williams, and I type in the paint color, and then they'll tell me what the name is at a different place. Right? You, can, you can actually do that and they'll mix the same color for you. Um, after I've figured out maybe a few paint that I want to try out, I buy some of those uh, sample cans or I grab some swatches from uh, the hardware store. I bring them home, I put them on the walls, I hang them up, and then I go and I revisit that room a couple times during different times of the day and I look, oh, you know what, that one is really looking kind of yellow. I'm going to take that one down, I don't really want that one. Oh, I'm really liking that one, but I don't like this one. And you can kind of pare down, so maybe you have like three uh, that you really like. Then maybe you want to grab some sample cans of paint. I don't do that. Uh, again, I'm a, I like to save money, even if it's five to ten dollars. Um, then I decide, you know what, I'm just going to go with this one. And then I, um, I just choose it and I go for it. I don't stress too much about if it's exactly perfect. Um, but one of the tricks that I really like when I'm choosing swatches at the actual hardware store is this, the coffee bean trick. So if you have um, purchased perfume before, you go to the bay, you smelt a bunch of perfumes, they give you a little can of like coffee beans that you can sniff to kind of reset your nose. There's the same thing at the hardware store. It's not a can of coffee beans. Um, it's a swatch that is called like ultra pure white. And that's what the paint looks like with zero tint in it. So it's kind of like a nice little reset. So I always grab that ultra pure white. It's always in the white section, use it at the top. If you can't find it, just ask someone there. You can also grab, a, bring a piece of uh, printer paper, it's the same thing. Then you can take this ultra pure white and you can compare it with different colors. So it kind of resets your eyes. Okay, this is my North Star. This one here, oh, it's a bit warmer. I can see that yellow tone. Oh, this one's a bit cooler. I can see that blue tone. Um, and it just kind of helps you get a bit of a visual because once you've looked at like 10 whites, you don't really know what's going on. Take that North Star, that ultra pure white and just use that to compare. All right, I'm gonna show you also, uh, I'm gonna talk to you about sheens, um, but I also wanted to get this little guy going. This is one of my favorite products. I'm gonna show you that later. Um, but I wanna talk about sheens. So again, I don't stress out too much about sheens. I don't love a flat mat. I really like mat, uh, like fixtures and things like that, like a mat uh, faucet. But as for paint, matte paint is really going to grab onto dirt, fingerprints, that kind of stuff. So if you have kids, if you have grandkids running around, a matte uh, paint is not going to clean very well. Um, but the higher you go up in sheen, the easier the wipeability is and the more uh, maybe waterproof, kind of proof, but water resistant it'll be. So for normal rooms like a, like a bedroom, I prefer like an eggshell. So it's still on that matter end but it has a bit more wipeability. If I'm going maybe into a kitchen or a bathroom I want it to be a little bit um, more 
uh, shiny. So something like a semi-gloss might be a little bit better. Gloss is going to give you a super shiny finish. It's very challenging to get a really good finishing gloss, and it's not really on trend. I haven't seen a lot of gloss, um, but if that kind of helps you understand the spectrum, um, I just wanted to share that with you. So. Again, some people stop themselves from doing projects because they don't want to do the cleanup, that kind of stuff is a headache. This spray that I use over here, it's called Matsenbach's Lift Off. I discovered it when I was painting my entryway floor and I had kind of messed up on the, the project. It was peeling, I hadn't primed it well. Again, you learn as you go, right? And that's okay to make mistakes, that's how we learn. Um, I bought this product and it just was amazing at taking up latex paint. So I never paint with a drop cloth. I always, I'm a great cutter, I am a really great roller, but paint is bound to fly all over the place. This um, product is really great at breaking the molecular bond um, and removing that paint off the floor. So even if you moved into a home and the previous people were really sloppy, um, this is gonna be really helpful to you. You can buy it at Home Depot in the paint section. They don't have it online. I've actually talked directly with the brand asking like what's the deal um, it is in the store in the painting section it's also on amazon for three times the price so i wouldn't recommend that you can if you want and it's just really great at breaking up uh, latex paint so it comes off uh, pretty easily that's pretty thick what i had there So yeah, that's a really great product. You can come up later if you want to take a picture of that. Uh, I 10 out of 10 recommend that. This is also my peel and stick tile that I've used. So if you want to check it out later, you want to touch it and uh, feel it, you're more than welcome to do that. All right. I told myself I would keep my pointer in my pockets this whole time. All right, so we're gonna t I'm gonna teach you an actual hands-on skill. I'm gonna teach you how to repair or apply caulking. But the first thing I want to talk about is a silly little bone that I like to pick, and it's about the pronunciation of that word. Um, some people try to be proper and they say caulking, but you don't go for a walk, and I'm not talking to you right now. It's caulking, and if you can say ball, we can also say caulk, and it's okay. We can be grown-ups <laughs> about uh, using uh, something that's part of improving our home. So don't be shy. I will say when people are, what's well, caulking? Either you're American or you're feeling a bit nervous. You don't need to go nervous. We can do this. All right, so I'm gonna to talk to you about two different varieties. It's really important to know the difference. When you go to the hardware store, you're gonna see hundreds of bottles and it might feel overwhelming, um, but there's two main differences. There's silicone caulking and there's acrylic caulking. Silicone, you're gonna to wanna to use in areas that are subject to water. So that's around a sink, in a shower, um, bath, you get the picture. Acrylic, you're gonna wanna use in an area that you would be painting. So baseboards, um, built-ins, any kind of trim like that. If you happen to use silicone, where you actually wanted to use acrylic, you probably won't be able to paint over it. Some silicone is paintable, but I do notice sometimes it turns yellow. So just be careful to use acrylic in non-water-based applications and silicone in water-based applications. So I have two of those um, here. If you were to buy a bottle like this, you won't be able to just start using it. Like, like it, it doesn't work like that. Um, this one, this one does. This one you can just use as a squeeze bottle, but I do recommend uh, using one of these caulking guns uh, if you have a large project. No one would ever in their right mind uh, do an entire home with one of these. This is like a quick little fix. You want to fill a couple holes, whatever. Um, but this is what you're going to want to use. Now, if you're just starting out, you might feel overwhelmed. Like, well, how do I even get it started? I know the first time I used it, uh, it took me a long time to figure out that there's actually foil inside sometimes. I get to puncture it. I'm trying to get it going and nothing's coming up. So I'm going to walk you through starting a uh, tube of caulking. I actually started this one yesterday, so some of the things might be a little bit fake, but bear with me. So I really like this brand. Actually, this is uh, Home Hardware's just store brand. I like it because it comes with a cap. That literally costs them point, like 0.1 of a cent, and I love that. All right, so what you're gonna do first is you're gonna cut off the tip. So I already cut off the tip of this one, and I don't wanna start a new one, but I'm gonna show you 
Um, this caulking gun is great because it actually has a built-in knife. There's a little hole in here. So you can just stick the tip in and slice off the end. Don't go all the way. You don't want a big hole. You want to start with a small hole. And if you want to get it a little bit bigger, then cut a little bit more off. You can't add more, but you can always take a little bit away. So start with a small hole so you don't have a ton of product coming out at once. And then if you need a bit bigger, you can. So you're gonna snip that off. Um, if your thing doesn't have this, one thing I actually like to do is use a cutting board and a utility knife, and then I can have a lot of control cutting it off. I like cutting it off on a bit of an angle uh, for better control. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do some of these have a, um, like a foil inside that your caulking won't start running until you break the foil. This caulking gun's awesome. It actually has uh, the thing to, you can use to puncture the foil. So you would just stick that in the tip, boom, puncture the foil. Let me get one of my little wipes here. Um, and then you'll be able to get it running. Again, if yours doesn't have one of those, I went for many, many years with just having um, a safe or a, a paper clip that I had straightened out. I kept that on my toolbox. All right, so then what next you want to do is get this loaded. So the way my uh, caulking gun works is like this. You just stick it in and it's ready to go. You can use the trigger. Mine's kind of already go to get the caulking moving along. This presser is just going to move along and move the product um, forward. Once it starts flowing, you can caulk, obviously, and when you're done, you want to let go of the tension so that the, it doesn't keep pouring out the end. All right, we are going to actually do this. Is there anyone here who's like really scared of power tools? Perfect, you're my victim. <laughs> All right, so first we're gonna install a baseboard. Do you want to come up here and do this? And it will look clean and flush and perfect. 
You're going to want to caulk baseboards before painting so that you can paint over. If you don't paint over caulking, it's like a primer, it grabs everything, it grabs the dust. So caulk before painting, or if you did do your caulking, you're going to have to paint after um, so you get that light build. All right, let me get some materials. All right, so baby wipes. You can tell why I'm a mother. Second, I really like a glove. You don't need a glove. I like it. Why not? We grab these at Dollarama. They sell on a pack of these. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to apply some caulk with our little gun here. Down the one. All right. So you're just going to line the end of your tube. See how I have a bit of an angle? Line it up right in that corner. And you're just going to apply gentle pressure and just move it along where the baseboard meets the wall. I'm just going to go to there because I want to show. If I leave it like this, I'm going to put it down and it's going to keep spewing out. Just let off the tension and then it's not going to do that. All right. Then what you could do, don't go out and buy baby wipes if you don't have them. Just use paper towel and a little cup of water with a drop of Dawn dish soap. Stick your finger in that water, wipe, and then wipe that off on the paper towel. If you have a baby wipe though, why not, right? Okay, so then you can take your baby wipe and you can just push your finger in there and wipe it. You're gonna have a really nice clean line. If you can't see that from here, no problem. Come up later and you can, you'll be able to see where there's a gap um, and no gap. It really adds a really nice clean finish. Now, a lot of people have um, tubs, uh, showers and stuff that have that, I'm gonna, yeah, I'll grab you in a second. Um, that have like black mold or popping and starting to crap, whatever. You can repair that today, next weekend, in an evening, whatever. Uh, I'm gonna grab this question and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Go ahead. No. What did I use there? Acrylic, because there's no water. That's, um, it, and that's the reason why the baby wipe could wipe it off. And then you're going to have 
a really nice, clean application of that silicone. And that's fresh paint. <laughs> My poor wall. All right, but that's pretty much the, the gist of it. So if you want to come check that out later, you can see in the middle, I have unclocked baseboard, and you can kind of see um, what that like looks like um, when it's finished. Again, any questions are welcome as I'm going along. I'm going to check the time. I could talk for ages. I only have 15 more minutes. All right, hanging a picture. This is an important life skill, um, and everyone is going to leave today with the ability to hang a picture. So this is my fake little demonstration wall. One thing that you really would want when you're hanging a picture is a stud finder. And it is scientifically impossible for a man to hold a stud finder and not do this. Found it every time. They have to. They can't not do it. So this is the best stud finder. I love this stud finder. I worked with a really crappy stud finder for a long time, and I finally decided to splurge a little bit, $33 on my Amazon storefront. This is the best. So a stud finder is gonna show you where the wall, uh, the wood features are behind the wall. And I love this one because it's not beeping at me. It's not annoying. I can see exactly where that stud is. The light is showing me the edges. It's showing me the middle. And this one never fails me. It's excellent. Okay, so that's on my Amazon storefront. Um, but we're gonna hang this picture. Do you need a stud to hang a picture every time? No, you don't. Because if I'm hanging a picture, I don't want to always put it right on where the wood is. I wanna put it wherever it looks good, and sometimes there's not gonna be a stud there. If you're hanging a shelf that's 60 pounds, you need a stud somewhere in there, but you can also use anchors um, to give you a bit of stability as well. So I'm gonna show you how to put in a drywall anchor today. Are there any other friends in the house that are scared of tools? Come here. My volunteer. Here's what I love grabbing for hanging pictures. This is a contractor kit. It has anchors, screws, it has a drill bit, um, as well as a driver bit as well. All right, so we are gonna first start by drilling a hole where we want our picture. What's your name? Come on over, Rex. It's a cool name. Um, you're gonna take this drill and you're gonna put a hole in my wall and you're just gonna give me some even pressure and just send it right on through, okay? Let's go somewhere like, like here, okay? There's no, there, you don't need to be nervous about a drill. Like nothing bad can happen. Don't prove me otherwise, Rex. Push, 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 boom. That's all. Give them a clap, my friends. Good job. So that's all you need to do, just send it on through. If you maybe didn't have a stud finder and you're just doing a little guessing game, you might hit wood. Grab a stud finder, it's better than making a bunch of holes. Um, you might also see pink insulation, that's okay. It's part of it. If you have plaster walls, I don't know how to help you. I've only lived in drywall. There's probably professionals around here who know the answer. All right, so these, this is a drywall anchor. Um, what's cool about a drywall anchor is you stick it in, and when you drill into it, it puts rings out on the back so that nothing's going anywhere. You're gonna be able to see that on the back of this wall if you would like to take a look um, later. Just gonna take your anchor, send it in with your uh, hammer. Then you can just grab uh, one of your screws, take your driver, Grab a different screw. Okay, you're not gonna put it all the way in because you want to uh, have something to hang on to. Obviously for an arch of this size, this is heavy duty hanging. You could just use like a little one of those little gold hooks, tap it in. But I want to show you this skill so that you can use it for multiple different things. And then, boom. You've hung a picture. Maybe it's perfect. I don't know. Is it good? Yep. It's good. That's pretty good. Um, so it's easy as that. When I Google how high a picture should go, I think they say uh, that the center is about five feet. Just Google it. You don't have to stress too much. Anything you want to learn can be found on the internet these days. Um, but I'm going to show you the toothpaste trick because sometimes your picture is going to have hardware on the back, maybe multiple, um, and you won't know necessarily where, uh, where it is. 
and these are just a few more of my tool favorites. So uh, a miter saw I really like, that's perfect for installing baseboards. You don't need that, you can buy a hand version of it. Um, but I do really like uh, that miter saw. A sander is great if you're refinishing cabinets. I think they're only like about 50 to $60. Um, this ride will be Airstrike. That's the air nailer that I love. That is one product. If you are leaving baseboards in your home, it is excellent. Uh, runs on battery, no compressor. Um, we've had that for 10 years and it's been excellent to us. Um, and then this Craig jig trap and the circular saw, I use that. It's what I bought for the table saw. If I'm, like, I'm one person, I'm usually working by myself. Um, I can't run a sheet of plywood through a table saw without it tipping and flying all over the place. But I have a two inch sheet of styrofoam. I lay uh, the piece of wood there and I use this trap and I can be on my hands and knees with the circular saw cutting nice straight lines. I'm doing that right now with some cabinets that I'm building for our RV. All right, so I'm gonna open up for a few little questions. I know the next presenter uh, is coming uh, next. Do you have any questions? I'm happy to answer anything you want. I really just covered it all. <laughs> yeah. So if you're feeling nervous, you can always come and talk to me after. I'm, I'll be accessible here. You can ask me um, anything. And I also am always available on my channel. So my DMs are always open. You can message me, hey Heather, what do you think about this? Hey Heather, I've got these two rugs. Which one do you like better? I'm happy to give my opinion on that. Um, my channel here is Our Barnes Yard. And you can follow me on Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Uh, and you can also visit my Amazon storefront for any of these um, tools that I've shown you today. And then this weekend, I actually have in my Instagram stories, uh, just if you click here on my profile, um, you'll see I'm giving away a $100 Home Depot gift card. If you'd like to enter, the instructions are there on my channel and I will draw for that um, after today. So thank you for having me. If you have any questions again, you're welcome to come and uh, bug me and stick around. The next presenters are going to pre present on all things home decor. So once you've DIYed your home, you've painted the walls, whatever, they're going to help you uh, create a beautiful home and pick up some, pick some decor that really suits uh, your area. So thank you again. I appreciate you coming. Thank you so much. Great job, Heather. Keep it going for Heather Barnes.